Yeah. This is the COO, Cheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook. She says, our hope is that one day people will host religious services in virtual reality spaces as well, or use augmented reality as an educational tool to teach their children the story of their faith. Imagine a synagogue where a holographic burning bush recites the Decalogue, or a cathedral where saint icons speak to you directly, or maybe animated deities waving their many arms in Hindu temples. I mean, you can already see here, this is like one world religion stuff, you yeah. know? We're recording. Great to be back with Jason Whitaker. He's hey, back. what's happening, my friend? I'm here. <laughs> Yes, and uh, we just pretty recently did a, a live Q&A, which was really cool. This is not yeah, going to be live. live. This is pre-recorded, so people can't ask us questions on the spot this time. That was a lot of fun, though, wasn't it? It was. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that again. Yes. So whenever we're ready, I'll be, be glad to do that one again. And we got good feedback. I think people really enjoyed it and, and felt like the answers yeah. were helpful. So I think that was really good. Um, I, I do want to start off what we're talking about here. We're, we're going to look at an article Jason sent me, but uh, first I have to show you something, Jason. <laughs> I have to show you something. All right, let's see this. All right. I'm ready. It's time to do a hat update. Wow, let's see. Nice. I see a couple bingos in there. So, <laughs> so I am, uh, I circled one of these hats because I just heard that uh, there's someone who watches my channel who's going to send me this hat. And now's my Love chance it. to quiz you again, Jason. Do you have any idea what team this is with an S on their hat? All right. It's the, that's the, the Marlins, right? Nope. The Marlins are Miami. Oh, oh dog. okay. Um, but you get, can you guess the city? Um, that it's, would be Seattle. It, it's Seattle. That's correct. It is okay. Seattle. I was yeah. going to say Seattle Marlins. I don't know what I'm thinking. No, that, no, it's close. It's the Seattle Mariners. That's what. Yeah, that's why your your mind got those two confused. Oh, well, that was, they do sound similar. Okay, I wasn't actually that bad then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the cool thing about that, uh, I think the, his name is Jared, and he told me he's going to send me a Mariners hat. He actually lives in Oklahoma, I think. I'm pretty nice. sure that's what I saw. So uh, it's funny because I, I don't know if you saw, Jason, I'm trying to collect. I'm trying to get more hats from the middle of the country. Yeah, yeah. And then someone who lives in the middle of the, the, country, middle of the country and he's still sending me a hat from the West Coast. <laughs> Wait, so it's uh, OK. I know. I know I should know this. Is there an Oklahoma team? No, I don't no. think so. OK, well, there we go. OK, so he's he's still doing yeah. a, a good deed. He's doing a. Christian D. Oh, though. yeah. No, I appreciate it. I just think that's funny. I mean, there isn't an Oklahoma team, but there's probably a team that he's closer to than Seattle. Well, that's true. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, I really do appreciate that. And anybody who wants to uh, send me any of the hats that I don't have, uh, I guess I should put that back up. These are the ones I don't have, the ones that are not checked off. Mm -hmm. And they can just email me at a fresh perspective at gmail.com. And in return, I'm sending people a copy of my book as a way to say thank you. I love so it. that's where we're at with the hats. Now I'm going to share uh, an article that Jason sent to me. And Jason, you're really good at uh, finding some interesting articles. Oh, you well, really you. are. Yes. This one <laughs> has a very intriguing title. Mark Zuckerberg is planting the first church of the metaverse and uh i will probably read just like the first part of it mm -hmm. but uh but but before i do i mean it might be good if we define what do they even mean by metaverse you know i i think i mean the article and we'll make sure the article is down in the show description it is very heady and i i had to read it a couple times if i understand it but let's just say just for laughs and giggles, Metaverse is a completely immersive online experience where I'm sitting in my office, Tim is sitting in his office, but we are in, interacting online 
in a completely different environment, totally different than where we currently are. And to the point that we start to think that where we are in the online experience is actually greater than where we are in the physical world. That's a, a real generic, I know somebody in the comment section is gonna give me a much more analytical um, definition of it, but I just figured I'd just say like, it's just a completely immersive online experience. There you go. Yeah, that's a good way. And another term that sometimes uses augmented reality. There we go. Where yep. you have the reality we live in, but we're augmenting it with technology and the use of, for example, holographic images, that sort of thing. Well, so, yeah, so yeah. augmented means that the reality, so um, if anybody's familiar with um, the, the video game Pokemon Go, that was augmented reality where you look around and you see reality, but you'll see a, a Pokemon, a, a digital character in the, our real world through the phone or through your technology. Virtual reality is where we are actually maybe using a device, uh, uh, glasses or something like that to insert ourselves into that virtual world. So we're no longer in this real hard physical world. Now we're in this virtual world. So there's just a, I, I just recently learned that. So I wanna make sure I say augmented reality, they're in our world, virtual reality, we're in their world. Yeah, it's fascinating because there are a lot of stories out there that uh, really use this as a plot device. Uh, oh, yeah. There's, for for example, a book called Ready Player One, where Perfect. it takes place in a virtual reality world. Yep. There's also, um, uh, I believe, one of the Pixar movies, Wally. Uh, if I, I didn't actually watch it, but I'm pretty sure that it's a bunch of people who are using like virtual reality uh, goggles and, and humankind has just be become, you know, completely wiped Immersed out. But, it, yeah, but yeah. yeah, but it all it does is all they do is just sit there and watch their virtual reality world, something like that. I'm so almost certain it, you're it, right. It, I don't know for sure. If anybody watched that movie, I know this is this is shameful that I didn't see that movie because I'm supposed to, as a as a dad, I'm supposed to know all the Pixar movies. Uh, but if anybody did yeah, see that and can verify the exact plot, and then one other one I was thinking of was uh, uh, was The Matrix, actually, because that was a situation where they were in a virtual world, uh, but yes. it was because of AI had taken over humanity. So Yes. So anyway, that's all the sci-fi stuff. But Man. this is where sci-fi sometimes meets the real world. And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was actually interviewed, and he does want to see the metaverse become a reality, I think is, is what they were talking about. Yeah. All right. So I'll read some of this here just so people get the, the basics of it. It says the church of Facebook is set to capture the human soul in Silicon on July 25th. The New York times reported that since 2017, the social media giant has quietly cultivated exclusive partnerships with select religious communities. As always, money is involved. While Facebook's ultimate goals remain sealed behind non-disclosure agreements, the Times article does hint at things to come. The company aims to become the virtual home for a religious community and wants churches, mosques, synagogues, and others to embed their religious life into its platform from hosting worship services and socializing more casually to soliciting money. The, partner, the partnerships reveal how big tech and religion are converging, the Times continues. Facebook is shaping the future of religious experience itself as it is done for political and social life. Oh, goody. In other words, ultra-mod spiritual centers will be blessed by mass data extraction, algorithmic polarization, and censorship of theological misinformation. If Facebook's history is any guide, every digital prayer will be scooped up and turned into a data point. Live stream preachers who deny the sanctity of LGBT lifestyles will be flagged and punished as extremists. Best of all, smartphone addicted congregants can donate their last widow's mite with the touch of a virtual button. Sounds like a little slice of heaven, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. I, I... 
Actually, it actually sounds worse than the first time I read it. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah, that's just, I, I don't know who would sign up for this, who would honestly agree. I mean, but, I mean, we live in a world now where I, as much as I want to believe that nobody would agree to this, I'm sad to say that they probably already agreed to it. Mm. Um, yeah, this is, wow. It actually sounds weird. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, and we've talked on our program about, you know, already churches, it, it's easy for them to replace the idea of physical gathering. Uh, and we've talked about the importance of physical gathering. And this is actually adding kind of a layer to that because now mm -hmm. we're talking about a certain platform, Facebook, and the potential for that platform to kind of manipulate and control how churches operate and what what they believe and i think the, the the clear concern that's being expressed is that there's going to be pressure on churches that yeah you can do church through facebook but you're going to have to uh you have you have to give a certain message because there are certain things that facebook won't right, allow right. so do you think that is um making a valid point i think i do believe that this is probably what is being attempted i do believe that that's a, i mean just right there in the middle paragraph about what these churches don't sanctify and what them being flagged as um extremists or misinformation how can like that alone right there since like facebook is going to determine what's misinformation in the religious context really like wow that is like yeah I'm glad that I don't use it that much anymore. Um, I'm glad that I'm off of it. And I mean, basically off it, I need to actually be off of it. But um, just the, the fact, like right here where he talks about the ultra mod spiritual centers will be blessed by mass data extractions, algorithmic polarization and censorship of theological misinformation. Like that's exactly what they're doing right now with various health issues, in politics why in the world would we let them or want them to be involved in church or in in the religious sphere i don't know who would wow i don't know who would actually agree to that but i do i do know that it's more well, likely going to happen right well yeah i mean i think clearly mm -hmm. they they do censor people mm -hmm. for certain beliefs or certain things they say and that's exactly the term they use misinformation I think the people who are likely to use it would would definitely be people that already agree with a certain um, cultural perspective, right? You know, there there yeah. are there are people out there who, you know, uh, are you know, there there are churches, for example, out there that are totally on board with some of the things that are talked about here. And obviously, you and me are coming from the perspective of, well, what does the Bible teach about these things? Mm -hmm. And we know that a lot of times what the Bible teaches is at odds with what is popular in our culture. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you could see how th that could be an issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, this, section here, this section here does talk more about the, uh, the metaverse, and it's titled Getting Saved in the Metaverse. And uh, he, in the interview, the Virgin interview, Zuckerberg describes the metaverse as an embodied internet, the holy grail of social interactions. So it really sounds scary, actually, you know? It does. Where you oh, can man. play, I'm sorry, where you can work, play, and enjoy a sense of presence alongside teleporting hel holograms. Whatever happened, like the fact that this company wants people to no longer interact in a physical sense, they want to move you and strictly for their benefit, their profit, their, um, their benefit. Like that's just crazy. And they're just talking about it freely. Like we want to yeah. get Tim, we want to get Jason out of the physical worlds and into this metaverse where we can uh, quantify and, 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 and basically monitor how they're thinking, what they're doing and so forth. That is so scary. Yeah, and and here's kind of how they try to pull it together and 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 kind of pitch it. 
Yeah. This is the COO, Cheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook. She says, our hope is that one day people will host religious services in virtual reality spaces as well, or use augmented reality as an educational tool to teach their children the story of their faith. Imagine a synagogue where a holographic burning bush recites the Decalogue, or a cathedral where saint icons speak to you directly, or maybe animated deities waving their many arms in Hindu temples. I mean, you can already see here, this is like one world religion stuff, you yeah. know? But even more than that, why? Why? It, uh, I, I mean, the faith has been taught without problem well, with enough problems, please forgive me, without technology. Jewish temples have been teaching. Christian churches have been teaching. Hindu temples have been teaching. Why? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of this? Besides just to add a layer of, of uh, for lack of a better term, add gatekeepers into the faith that need not be there. There's no reason. Yeah, well, that kind of gets into, yeah. in the next part, talking about, you know, tying in the idea of our technology with magic and that appeal to mm -hmm. having some sort of experience that is miraculous, you know? So I think that's the lure of it, right? Yeah, that, um, that's, that's what they're going for. But again, um, they mentioned it before that Facebook has no spiritual boundaries, um, oh, yeah. And I think that is something that we can't overlook. Um, well, you can tell because oh, of yes. the very the very thing she uses as examples there. You know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. She never really uses anything that would would uh, tie in with biblical or evangelical beliefs, for example. <laughs> you know, never. she uses never, <laughs> but definitely they threw the Hindu in there. Yeah, very. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there, there's, there's no, to them, religion is just religion. It's, it's not some sort of, they, they actually want to somehow, uh, kind of be arbiters of reality, uh, oh, yeah. or have great sure. influence. And that's our concern here, I think, is the influence that they want to wield. Cause, but also just the understanding of what religion is. Cause in that second, um, in a paragraph, from the new atlantis to techno occultism mm -hmm. the last sentence of that first paragraph really summarizes it but this yeah. is not hyperbole technology has become a religion right like that's that's really it they want yeah. to be and and by them by making that statement they become the the apostles if you will the um the, the priests, enlightened ones, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the pastors, gurus. the gurus yeah. as such of this new religion. So of course they want people to cut ties with their, with their physical religions and, 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 and our true religion or true faith and insert it into this banana town. Cause I can only imagine how long it'll take for various teachings to get shaved off and, and, and sanded smooth until eventually all religions look exactly the same as you said one world religion i think it's very easy to make that jump yeah i mean that's the trend because what it always is about and you see it even in countries that have banned you know christianity or they've banned uh religions what they end up doing is they they form a religion of you have to worship the leader of the country for example yeah. right yeah. it is power and and humans crave that power and uh, so yeah there's <laughs> definitely concerning things now let's go on to this uh section here <laughs> building back better with corporate religion so that's definitely um a reference there to uh to biden's uh slogan there even though it's not specifically talking about biden here oh yeah i didn't even pay attention to that yeah, again, it's just talking about corporate religion, and they mentioned uh, Microsoft. Yeah, these tech companies, I think they talk about them working together. Google, Sony, HTC are also leaders in the effort. Uh, and these are 
uh, group or these are organizations or companies that have joined forces to manifest the meta metaverse in our daily lives. I mean, yeah. we have to admit there's a lot of power in technology in these big tech companies. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, um, no right. I mean, you you yeah. can definitely see how they can influence people and influence populations because they they know about people they're collecting a lot of data but they kind of use that and they also use information manipulation right we'll yeah. show you what we want to show you right and then that influences people so that's really uh i think the kind of thing that's being brought out man uh the end of this article too uh you know just has i think kind of uh kind of a a pithy ending to it each of us will be free to spiral off into our own inc inconsequential reality, play, playing make-believe in the shadow of a homogenizing corporate umbrella. It will be heaven on earth. Maybe you didn't buy, Maybe you don't buy that story, and that's fine. But don't worry about it. If Zuckerberg's proposed universal basic income is sufficiently generous, the powers that be will just buy it for you. Wow. And there, there are a lot of... Um, a lot of carrots, right? String oh, yeah. uh, carrots on the strings to to pull people into to to doing things, and that again is is how we're manipulated. Social media, for example, is designed to be addictive, and that's just that form of how it can manipulate our behavior. And I think that's uh, you know that's a that's being brought out here. This idea yes, of manipulation. Absolutely. Well. I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that. I, I kind of know you sharing it with me. You probably uh, weren't too keen on the idea of uh, doing a Facebook church. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going to. I won't be doing that. <laughs> yes. And, of course, in the comment section, if people have uh, thoughts they want to put in there based on what we've said, you can read the article for yourself and uh, see. I mean, yeah. I, I don't – I will say – I don't mind using technology. I mean, I, I use YouTube to do my videos, um, yeah. but it, but it is something we always have to pay attention to. Uh, even YouTube can censor people and, uh, it, it's, you have, you just have to say, I want to make sure that what I'm doing, I'm doing because it's what I believe in. It's my conviction and I'm not going to allow some company to ultimately tell me what I can or can't do. And that's especially uh, true for us Christians. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that article. That was uh, hey, no really problem. good. Yeah, that was nice that we could take a look at that.